Okay, so, Kieran. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Kieran. And uh, where do you come from? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I come from uh, the British Isles. Okay, and are you, are you glad to be from the British Isles? Do you, do you consider yourself um, a permanent resident? Do you ever see yourself going further yes. afield? No, I, uh, I plan to remain here. If I, ha I don't have any plans, but... Um, but yeah, my, I'll probably remain here the rest of my life. Mm. Which, Depends which, how long I live, really. For yeah, a ridiculously yeah. long time, I probably will move somewhere else, like space. <laughs> OK. Yes, it's quite likely to move into space. Yeah. Um, for all of us. So, um, you're in the UK. Are you, are you happy with your wash? Are you happy with the way things are going in this fine country of ours? Um, do you see that there's any way of uh, improving things? Yes, very much so. Okay. Well, well, I'm like politically like on the far left and kind of hippie-ish kind of character. And yeah, I have massive ideas about how things could be different. Um, so uh, if you look around you today, um, or, or you know, throughout your, your, your time on this planet until now, if you look around you, what do you think is the least satisfactory part of this country? Um, no, I suppose I am worried about like the human race blowing itself up or something, or uh, those kind of big human issues. Oh. I'd agree with that. Though I'm supposed to be an impartial interviewer. Yeah. Um, so you're on my side. I'm on. I am on your side, but That's I might good. be lulling you to a false sense of uh, trying oh. to get you to open up. Okay. Um, but I, mean, I, I do have a yeah. Like everybody, I have a kind of cocktail of worries. I am worried about people suffering right now. But I see generally clubbing together and working together and being friends and sharing what we have is probably a good way to solve problems both in the short term and the long term, I think. So mm. I don't see a big uh, conflict between um, helping people now and helping people in, in the future. Mm. Okay. Okay, and... Um... I suppose that extends beyond the, these these shores of ours uh, to the world at large. Do you think the issues that we have, the problems that we have to overcome in order to make the world a better or a bearable place, are, are more global than, than national? Yeah, totally. I, I'm against national nationalism. Uh, I try not. I don't consider myself to be British or English or Welsh or anything. I just. Uh, Try not to have a nationality. I think nationality is a big like, way of dividing people, and um, without being antagonistic towards people who do have national identity, yeah, I tried to. Uh, I think we should try and get away from that and uh, think of ourselves as having common problems in, in the world. Mm. Okay, good. Particularly a problem in a country like Britain where we are at war with at least one country most of the time these days and obviously war is an uh, obvious kind of dark side to national identity hmm. for thinking. Okay. So with, um, would you say that um, problems are caused by nation states um, but the solutions lie in the hands of individuals, I mean the way you treat the person next to you? Uh, because I, I'm thinking that compassion you can have, and I believe I do have. Yeah. Um, but there's a limit to how far it goes because I do spend a lot of time thinking about people worse off than myself and people who are mm. uh, overseas in particular. Um, and for some yeah, of us, it, it's paralysing, yeah. uh, you know, because it's, yeah. if, you, if, if you feel that suffering, then it's uh, it is just paralysing. Um, so what's the question? Um, the question is, is the solution how you treat the individuals around you? Uh, how, well, can, how can you extend that further afield? I think there are different sort of spheres you can focus on. Um, and again, I do see them as kind of complementary. I mean, there isn't really a, too bad a conflict between having been an individu individually helping people or having... You know, um, an emotional connection to somebody else and other things about changing the rules in the world and um, changing how kind of these uh, less uh, sort of emotional based things like um, these laws and structures uh, kind of um, 
the way things are going in that kind of dimension. Um, I suppose, I mean, there are, uh, there's always a conflict of, of where to devote your time. Mm. Um, I was in a political meeting just this week where there were two speakers invited, and one was on about, was a kind of Buddhist and uh, into politics. And he was on about kind of, we need to like heal our souls or something, you know, that kind of thing. And then there's this other guy who had a kind of like utopian kind of plan for society, which is more to do with the rules, need to be this and that. Um, we do, um, there isn't a conflict in the sense we've got to try and do sort of both. But, mm. but, but at the same time, there is, a, in a sense, there is always limited time and uh, mm. you do have to make a, a judgment call in terms of what to focus your time on. Mm. And uh, it's all a bit guesswork from my point of view. I'm not a kind of social scientist or I'm not sure any social scientists really know the answers to these things. Uh, for me, it's kind of you go on a kind of hunch. Mm. Yeah, because you don't know whether you're right until the future has happened. Yeah, you don't. Um, I tend to focus a bit like you, maybe, on things that I can't I can't see how it would backfire too badly. Uh, like Amnesty International, for example, I don't. It's hard to see what what's going to go wrong with writing letters to try and get the prisoners who are getting tortured released. Mm. It's one of those things like the Red Cross. Or, one of those organizations where it's not so much of a risk. Whereas with just with other things like if you if you like get behind the Labour Party to keep the Tories out, it's a bit more of a risk. It could backfire the Yeah, if you commit yourself to um, some ambiguous or or complex issues no, not ambiguous issues. Complex issues. Yeah. Um, then there are obviously complex answers and people will suffer as a result of you choosing to do the right thing. So if socialism is right then um, you end up upsetting a lot of people who have the money at the moment yeah. and you do genuinely cause rich people to suffer which is obviously not a good thing mm. whether it's fair is a separate matter entirely mm. um, whereas if you do have a question is it right, right that this person's being tortured no it's not we agree on that yeah, good that's, well, that's next and um, but there are obviously gray areas mm. with um, Amnesty and there are an awful lot of people when you think of uh, the deep south mm. in the states or um, you know, and then there are people with deeply held religious convictions in Iran mm. who think that people should be executed for any number of things, you know. Mm. Um, and murder, it, it's, it's a clear black and white issue for them and they're fundamentally opposed to my opinion. Do they have the right to that opinion? I'm, I, can't, I can't say at this point in time, mm. no. They don't have the right to that opinion because you don't kill people. Um, but that, I could be at loggerheads with those people. Um, However, I was going to pause this. Yeah.